I'm Susan and this is Aaliyah and welcome to Seed Scholars Gather and Grow Summer Series where we're going to explore our senses out in our natural environment. Exactly, so we're going to be exploring our sense of sound, our sense of smell and our sense of sight and our sense of touch, our sense of taste and beyond. So stay tuned for some videos and activities that go with those senses. Can't wait! Welcome to our segment on taste and in this section we're going to be exploring some different ways we can interact our sense of taste with our natural environment. Taste is a fascinating sense that we have. I'm so grateful for my sense of taste and I have that through the taste buds that are on my tongue. If you investigate in the mirror the little bumps ah, on your tongue you will find that those are where your taste experiences are happening. That is the center in your oral cavity in your mouth. And we are taking in external things, things outside of our body, inside of us. And through our sense of taste, we're determining if something is toxic, if something is bad for us, what are the nutrition qualities of the thing that we're putting inside of our bodies. And it's doing so much for us and connecting us to our outside world. There are five types of taste that we usually encounter. There is sweet, savory, sour, bitter, and umami. So as we explore these things that we'll be tasting from nature, think to yourself which of those flavor profiles are happening with your taste buds. Is your body, is your sense of taste telling you that it's good for you? Is it telling you that you're not interested? And just pay attention to what happens in your body as we interact with our sense of taste with the outdoors and nature. To get ready to make elderflower cordial, some things that are handy to have are first of all some secateurs or scissors just to get your elderflower itself from the tree and it's best to try to create the cordial close to the time you've harvested it so that it's fresh and ready and it's really nice to harvest it when it's dry out and the petals are just full of fragrance and not too damp. So we want about one liter or two pints of elderflower harvested. So you can do this on your home hob as well, but if you're out of the fire, you'll need some fire things too. Uh, but you'll also have yourself a pot, a tea towel, a ladle, a funnel, some granulated sugar, and a sterilized jar or container that you're planning to store it in afterwards. You'll also need some lemon zest and lemon juice and you're ready to go. Now that I've collected my one liter or two pints worth of elderflowers and I shook them out to make sure there were no little insects having a, a party in there <laughs> and then I didn't wash them because I didn't want them to lose some of their flavor. I put them in the pot and covered them just so that the flowers were covered 
with water. My pot is actually a bit on the small side, but it'll do. And it's going to simmer here for 30 minutes, and I'll top up the water if needed, if it's getting a little bit low from evaporation. And once that's done, I'll proceed with straining through my tea towel, or if you have muslin or something like that, to strain it through. And I'll measure how much, much juice I've gotten out of it, and I'll proceed with my, with my other measurements for sugar and the rest of the ingredients after that. Oh, and I forgot to say that you can add as much lemon zest as you want in that, in this pot section of the brew. After those 30 minutes of simmering and straining the elderflower through the tea towel to get all the juice, it's on to the next step. So at that point, you'll add 350 grams of granulated sugar and half of the juice of a lemon to every 500 milliliters or one pint of liquid and heating it gently to dissolve the rest of the sugar and simmering for a little bit to get rid of any bits that are floating to the top. You can then pour the liquid through a funnel and you'll be ready with your sterilized bottles to store it for at least several weeks in the fridge to enjoy with some bubbly water or with some apple juice or whatever delicious combination suits you best. So there you have it. And I am sending out a toast to you with your cordial when it's ready. Cheers. Well, we've made our cordial. We did all the steps, labeled it so I know when it was created, and now it's time to taste. <laughs> Slancha. Ooh, smells really good. Let's see how it tastes. Slancha, slancha. Mmm, delicious. Mm. Thanks, flowers. Cheers. <laughs> Today I'm going to be showing you how you can explore your sense of taste by making some wild food fritters. So to begin you need to make a really simple batter. So we've just used some buckwheat and water. So it's one part buckwheat to one part water and you can add a little bit extra until you get a batter consistency. Um, and then we went and had a look for some different ingredients that we could add to it. So we have some, we're going to do a sweet um, fritter with some apple um, and we have some gorgeous flowers here. Here's some sage flower and um, our flowers, our brassica flowers as well, which are also edible. Um, and we're going to add them to our sweet fritter, which we might cover or drizzle with some honey. And we also have our savory which we've put some chard we have some sage and we also have some thyme and we might put a bit of salt on this so and um, that's basically it so i'm going to show you how you can make your own fritter uh, using the ingredients we've talked about or any other ingredients that you can find nearby so um, dandelions are a great addition you could include some blackberries or some um uh, other uh, other flowers and things that you find in your environment that you know are safe to eat and if you're not sure make sure you ask an adult. So let's go and make our fritters.
sizzling. Sizzling together. We are making. Food fritters. This is taste. These are our senses. Something in nature. Something to care Something to care Well, Anya, what do you think? Shall we go on a go? I would love to. Please. Can't wait to guess. taste them. Okay, so I see an apple one. Yeah. So maybe I'll go for some little sprinkle of sugar. I would definitely recommend a little bit of sugar and maybe some lemon juice okay, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Love some of that. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Wow, it smells really good. Mmm. Mmm. Sweet. Pretty good. It tastes that apple, that sage actually. Mm. Can I try a savory one? Mm. Okay, so this one has some greens from the garden, but you might also put nettles or sorrel or other greens foraged from around, depending on the season, or other goodies. There we go. It's really bringing out the olive oil, too. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us for Gather and Grow Summer Series. We had a sensational time, and we hope you did, too. See you next time. Slán!